And I want to start off by saying that, and, and this may sound obvious, but the way we raise our standard for men and the way we raise our standard for humans is to raise our standard for ourselves. It's only through raising our own standard and chasing after that new standard that we will then raise the standard for our whatever class you want to put yourself in as men or of a nationality or of a whatever, whatever that may be. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Sales Wolves podcast. As always, I am your host, Tyler Harris, and I am a sales wolf. Ow! I am alone once again, a lone wolf on the Sales Wolves podcast. Joseph is out of town, so I'll be taking over today for episode 113. And in this episode, I wanted to discuss something that... Uh, I touched on briefly yesterday in an episode of a little mini series that we uh, have called Modern Man, where myself and, and two other guys here in Greenville, and we bring on a fourth uh, guest uh, each episode, we sit around and talk about the topics that uh, plague men uh, specifically in a modern world. And we talk about how do we become better men uh, in the modern world uh, that we now live in. And the topic yesterday I thought was just very interesting. And it's always interesting to get uh, four different opinions on a topic because we have four different backgrounds, four different contexts, four different frameworks of which we live our lives. And it was on the topic of how do we raise our standards, uh, both how do we raise our standards for ourselves? And then how do we raise the standards for men in general? And I want to start off by saying that, and, and this may sound obvious, but the way we raise our standard for men and the way we raise our standard for humans is to raise our standard for ourselves. It's only through raising our own standard and chasing after that new standard that we will then raise the standard for our whatever class you want to put yourself in as men or of a nationality or of a whatever, whatever that may be. But it starts with yourself. So when you look at raising your own standard, I think uh, the place where you have to start is through self-awareness and understanding where you currently are. So what's the current standard with which you live your life? And as we were talking yesterday, I found myself wanting to ask the question, but it just really, there was not a good place for me to insert this question because it would have kind of derailed the momentum that we were on. But some people look at standard as a minimum. So this is my standard, meaning this is what I can't fall below. Other people would look at standard as almost a filter. So it's a filter in which you then look at every future opportunity, every future decision, you run it through your filter or you run it through your standard. Like, does this meet my standard? Like I have, I have standards that I want to with, with, uh, uphold and does it meet that or does it not? And I'll base my decisions on that. But the first way is looking at it as, okay, this is the standard performance level or the standard acceptable level that I'm willing to live with. Anything above that's great, but I will not go below. So whichever way you want to look at that, you need to establish what your standards are. You need to establish where you are at in your life currently uh, and what those standards are in the four main areas of your life. Again, I break your life down into four areas, your mind, body, business, and relationships. So what's the standard for your relationships? What's the standard for your mind? What's the standard for your body? What's the standard for your business? And really getting clear on where you're at because you can't talk about or think about or start planning to level up, to increase your standards until you first know where your standards are. That's the first step. Now, the second step is once we've realized where we are, 
now how do we level up? How do we raise our standards? And one story that I want to talk about and an analogy really, uh, is used by Ed Milet. And there's a couple different videos that he has podcasts that he has where he discusses this. And I just absolutely love it. I really respect all the stuff that Ed Milet puts out. You have to respect the fact that he's under, you know, 50, top 50, under 50 years old, uh, net worth in the United States is worth like $480 million has become a gigantic influencer. Um, but it's had massive success throughout his entire life. But he talks about your standard as your thermostat and this idea of our thermostat being set at a certain temperature. And that is our standard. He also talks about that as being our identity. And so when your thermostat is set at a certain temperature, that means that there's going to be periods of time in your life where great things start happening. Successes start popping up. Your temperature starts to increase. But what does a thermostat do? A thermostat regulates the temperature. So it takes into account an increase or decrease and it's able to regulate by bringing it back down or raising it to where your standard is. So during that period of time where things are going awesome, you've got all this success popping up, great things are happening, you'll figure out a way to bring yourself back down to wherever your standard is. You'll figure out a way to bring yourself back down to wherever that thermostat is set. Now, the opposite is also true. When you go through a period of time where uh, failure is is happening on a regular basis where obstacles are popping up where trouble is is at the very forefront of everything that you're doing you'll also figure out a way to raise that temperature back up you'll figure out a way to bring it back to your standard because that's the place where you're now comfortable you're now uh comfortable in the ability to stay there so the focus of life then is how do we raise that standard? How do we raise that thermostat uh, to where now you're at a higher level that is comfortable? You're at a higher level that you can regulate back to when things go south. And as you, comp and as you continue to have successes, you're not bringing it back down so far. So how do we do that? There's a couple ways. Uh, and Ed talks about uh, really two main ways. The first of which is the people that you surround yourself with. So it's that circle of influence. And, and this makes sense when you, when you look at it from this analogy of, of temperature, because if I'm a certain temperature and I, all of a sudden I surround myself that are at a much higher temperature by being around them, of course, it's going to raise my, my internal temperature. Like, of course that's going to happen. But the same is true for those people that are at a lower temperature than you. If all of a sudden you're at 80 degrees and you go hang around with a bunch of people at 50 and 60, your temperature is going to drop. And we have to be aware of this. We have to be super hyper aware of this when we find ourselves in scenarios with people that are bringing our temperature down. And then we need to focus on actively reaching out to and bringing people into our lives that are operating at a higher temperature. So that's one way of doing that is by creating that circle of influence. It's by bringing in people, taking away the lower temperature, bringing in people that are higher temperature. It will always raise your thermostat, raise your standard. The second way, uh, which is the way that I'm you know, very familiar with, is by implementing a ton of action, a ton of activity into short periods of time, into short spurts of activity. And Ed talks about this idea of a pool, and you've got that water line, right? That's, that's where the, the pool water level has gotten to, and then it's gone back down. When you flush a ton of water into that pool, it's going to raise the level of the pool. It's going to create a new water line. When the pool goes back down, that water line is still there. Just like that thermostat, when you put a ton of activity into a short period of time, it's going to raise your temperature that way that when you go back to your normal activity level, it will seem slow. It will seem 
it'll seem like there's not much going on because you've just gone through this period of time where you had so much activity. When you go back to your normal flow of operation, you'll think to yourself, man, I can do a little bit more. I can squeeze a little bit more into this work day. I can squeeze a little bit more during this two hours at night where I'm, you know, was watching TV. I can actually do some stuff that's productive. And in the process of doing so, you'll raise your thermostat. Now, when I talk about a ton of activity, when I talk about cramming a ton of action into a short period of time, I'm talking about so much activity, so much action that it has to be done in a short period of time because it could never be sustainable long term, that it would only lead to burnout, that if you were to try to try to live that lifestyle of that much activity at one time for six months, a year, bad things will happen. So it has to be in these short spurts. Some people will actually put names for it. Like, hey, I'm about to do a 30-day sprint. I'm about to do a 60-day run. Like they'll have these little names or terms that they put on it, um, especially in different types of sales organizations or multi-level marketing organizations. You'll hear about like when someone gets started, your fast start plan or your 30-day sprint, these things that every now and then are, are fantastic to raise your thermostat because it shows you how much possible activity you can put in of what's possible. Again, that's what's sustainable, but what's possible. And when you see what's possible, then you'll start to see in your normal flow of operation, the areas where you can increase. And as you go through this process year after year, where there's a couple of months out of each year that are those sprints, that are those thermostat raising activity level months, then it's going to raise your natural standard, your natural thermostat. This process is extremely important in figuring out, number one, where am I right now? And then where do I want to get to and how? Like the, the, the secret is in the how. And those are two ways uh, that I've seen play out in my own life. And I've seen play out in the lives of so many other people. And I would challenge you in the coming weeks to identify a period of time that you just want to test this out. You want to test this out and see what would happen if I started trying to surround myself with people that are operating at a higher temperature. And you know who those people are. You also know who the opposite is. You know who those people are in your life that you feel like you're always having to pull them. Yeah, I recently was uh, listening to a, a sermon by Erwin McManus, who's incredible. And he was talking about those people in your life that you just always feel like you're you're pulling them through life. Like every few months, every few weeks, maybe some every few days, you feel like you're always pulling them out of something, pulling them back to reality, pulling them to whatever they need to do. But you have to focus on having more people pulling you than people you're pulling. If you think about this idea of, of trying to go uphill with a downhill strategy. If you're trying to get somewhere, if you're trying to move forward, you have to have more people pulling you forward than you have holding you back that you're pulling forward. Because that's the only way that there's going to be forward momentum. And so as those people that you're surrounding yourself with that are raising your temperature and getting rid of the people that are pulling your temperature down. There's only so much time in the day. There's so, only so much effort that we can put in in a day that you have to start guarding it fiercely from those negative influences. And then how much activity could you possibly put in to April, to May, to the next 30 days of your life? And what would it look like to raise that thermostat, to raise that standard just a little bit? Would it mean that you had more time to spend with your family? Would it mean that you had, you know, a higher level of success in your business, which would afford you the monetary uh, rewards to be able to go on that vacation you've always wanted to go on, to get that car that you've always wanted? You know, what would that look like in your life if you, if you were to actually implement these things? But it's an interesting perspective to start living your life in terms of temperature, because it's so black and white. Like, you know, when things are hot and when things are cold, you know, when a decision that you're making 
is going to be a decision, again, in that second definition of standard being that filter, you know the decision that you're making right now, whether it is going to make you cooler or make you warmer. And you can start basing your decisions off of that. I want to constantly be raising my temperature. So the decisions that I'm making, I want to make sure that they are ones that make me warmer, not make me cooler. So guys, with that, I challenge you, start figuring out first, what is your standard? What's your current thermostat? What's the current temperature set at? And then start implementing these two activities to raise that standard, to raise that internal thermostat, to raise that temperature and just see what happens in your life. I think it'll be extremely beneficial and I think it'll prove extremely powerful. So guys, with that, this is episode 113 of the Sales Wheels podcast. As always, I'm your host, Tyler Harris, and I am a sales wolf. Ahoo!